But uh, I took interest in this year's theme because I know what occupation feels like. My country had been occupied for many years um, in the first 20th century, and uh, we still live in the shadow of their colonization. Um, I think it's a very contained feeling, and there's a lot of urge to be liberated and freed from what we don't want. Um, and there's also a sense of emptiness and wonder as well. My name is Grace Allendorf, and I am on staff at New England Conservatory. And I work in their Community Performances and Partnerships Department. And so my job is getting to help coordinate these events and bring our amazing students out to fantastic communities like you. And we are so excited to be here today in this gorgeous space. Um, this is the third concert in our Music at the Meeting House series for this year. Um, we're so grateful to Erica and to Devin and the team here at Old South Meeting House for this partnership and it's always so amazing to hear um, beautiful music in such a gorgeous space. So thank you for having us and for all you do to make these concerts happen. Um, as I mentioned, this is the third um, of our concerts in this series. We have one more coming up to close off the series next week. Um, so April 13th at 1 p.m. the Verona Quartet will be giving a performance so I hope maybe some of you will be able to make it back for that. Um, and I am so excited to have Inmo here with us today. Um, Inmo is in his first semester, I believe, of our Artist Diploma program at NEC, which is one of our more prestigious programs. Um, open to just a select number of students every year. And it enables students to grow not only musically, but just as people. Um, they are working with our fantastic NEC faculty and have access to all of our resources. So I know that you're in for a real treat this afternoon. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Erica and you'll get to hear a little bit more about Inmo and about the music that you'll be hearing this afternoon and I hope you enjoy the program, thank you. So my name is Erica and I'm the education director here at Old South Meeting House um, and I am thrilled that we are able to do an extra little thing today. Um, as those of you who were here for last week's concert um, perhaps uh, remember that I mentioned uh, that we put out kind of a call to artist participation uh, this season and uh, welcomed, invited the NEC students who would be performing in this series that if they wanted to, that we would love to have them kind of select some of their pieces related to a theme um, that ties in with our other programming here at Old South Meeting House. Um, we've been recognizing the 250th anniversary of the military occupation of Boston in 1768 and inviting people to explore the theme of occupation from a variety of different angles, personal, political, historical, contemporary, and so on. Um, and Inmo um, and I had a conversation about a week ago uh, reflecting on uh, how he selected his pieces to play today based upon thinking about that theme. And I'd love to have sort of have a, a version of that conversation now so that he can share with you a little introduction to what you're going to hear today. Thanks so much for agreeing to do this. I know it's an extra piece of the, piece of the puzzle when you're about to perform. Um, so uh, when we spoke last week, uh, we spoke, you shared a little bit about um, about your reflections on occupation and what it means to you in terms of your own history and, and biography, and I wonder if you would share a little bit about that sure. with the audience. Um, I wasn't born in this country, nor am I a citizen of this country yet, but uh, I took interest in this year's theme because I know what occupation feels like. My country had been occupied for many years um, in the first 20th century, and uh, we still live in the shadow of their colonization. Um, I think it's a very contained feeling, and there's a lot of urge to be liberated and freed from what we don't want. Um, and there's also a sense of emptiness and wonder as well. So 
I chose these two pieces, which I think can tell the values that we cherish. And I think they both tell these values in a very gentle way. Um, and I must confess that the first piece that I'm going to play today, um, I have been only, I came across this piece only a month ago. And in fact, I would like to acknowledge that the composer is sitting right here. Um, and um, um, she was born in China and she immigrated to the States when she was young. Um, I think I didn't choose these pieces because they have, you know, a direct relation to a war or occupation. And Copeland wrote it during the Second World War and dedicated his violin sonata to his friend who died in the Pacific in duty. But even if he didn't dedicate the piece to his friend, uh, and I personally don't think the piece has very much to do with the war, I would still choose this piece because the, the message or the impression that I get from um, these pieces, um, I think they're just reminders of what we should respect and value as a group. And I think they, those values are worth sharing. Um, and um, we always strive for you know, something good, something hopeful, and I think these pieces represent that as well. Thank you. Um, I was um, I was interested in the um, and just to clarify that you're you're from Korea, right? Because I I didn't say that at the beginning, but um, yeah, that, that's your. Um, uh, and I was interested in your. Um, kind of, it seemed to me, relating uh, the, uh, the experience of immigration um, and being an immigrant um, to somehow to that, that the, the related theme, the, the occupation, the yeah. theme in terms of... Um, yeah, I think, uh, again, I'm not an American, but I think diversity is what, you know, at least partly accounts for the greatness of this country. And um, that's where Gia's piece comes in, I think. She, I don't like, you know, separating what's Asian, what's American, what's European, but there's definitely um, a cultural influence that's embedded, you know, in oneself. And when I think when people come into this country, they don't abandon that. I think those are actually strengths. And those are partly what shapes this country's values, I think. So I think I wanted to incorporate that aspect into the program. Yeah. And, and you, you said, um, you used the, the term of un-Americanness when, when we spoke about kind of an, some, some of the musical elements of that mm -hmm. piece. Um, having it being a, a t things that are typical for for Chinese uh, music and perhaps we, m we might not expect mm -hmm. thinking of American music. Yeah, when I first looked at the music, I, I was immediately drawn to um, the, the gestures that she wrote and it reminded me of, you know, Asian brush, 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 brush stroke. And um, I just felt I, um, it just felt very familiar to me, and I think, you know, again, it's it's something not explicit, or you know, that's not the message, but it's there in probably in the subconscious level, and yeah, I think those those gestures um, are not American. I must say, it's it's. Um, yeah, it's of course the personal view, but I think it's, it's, it's good that we can, you know, have an open attitude to different cultures, and I think that aspect of the piece is part of it. All right. I think we, we need to move on now and play the music. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so I'll get these chairs out of the way. Thank you. Thank you.